Uh, there are at least three different uh, space explorations um, already uh, scheduled in to travel to some of these moons, uh, really with the goal um, being to determine if there is extraterrestrial life. So uh, my name is Carly Noon. I am a Gamilaroi woman from uh, Tamworth, New South Wales. Uh, I'm currently living on Ngunnawal Nebri country in Canberra, ACT, uh, where I'm lucky enough to be doing my PhD in uh, astrophysics uh, at the Australian National University. Uh, and I'm really interested in uh, obviously my culture and our own uh, knowledge to do with the sky. Uh, but also really interested in um, the dynamics of our galaxy uh, in general and, and kind of how our galaxy works. So tell me what's been happening recently regarding Jupiter and its moons. What have we discovered? Uh, so previously, Saturn uh, was the planet in our solar system that was recorded as having the most moons. But very recently, Jupiter has overtaken Saturn. Uh, it's now documented to have 92 moons uh, with the discovery of these extra 12 new moons. Uh, and with that, again, it's, it's the planet with the most moons in our solar system. System, uh, but it's probably very likely that there are more moons hiding out there, whether it be on Jupiter or Saturn or any other planets in our solar system. What's the makeup of these these new moons that we've discovered, and and what do they mean for? For science, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so these discoveries came out of some new surveys that have been going on over uh, 2021. Uh, and these new surveys are using telescopes that have really great uh, spatial resolution. Um, so essentially, they're able to capture uh, objects at a really small scale, uh, much smaller than we've been able to detect before. Uh, and that's why we're kind of seeing these uh, these new moons being discovered. Now, for Jupiter in particular, these new new moons, they're in the uh, the outer orbits. They actually have very very long orbit periods, um, over you know five hundred days and plus. When we compare that to Earth's orbit around the sun, uh, of course, it goes for three hundred and sixty five days. So these orbits are much longer um, of the moons going around Jupiter. Uh, and what that tells us, combined with the fact that a lot of these moons are actually going uh, in a retrograde motion. So that means they're going in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation. Uh, and that combined with these long orbits tell us that these pieces of moon or basically rock uh, probably come from the solar system somewhere and that they weren't actually formed uh, in the orbit of Jupiter. So this gives us a bit of an insight into the early solar system and the types of materials that were present in the early sol solar system. And how does that compare to Earth's moon besides obviously the difference in orbit, as you mentioned? Yeah, so these moons are very, very small. Uh, our moon is about 4,000 kilometers in diameter. Uh, now these moons, these newly discovered moons, they're between one uh, to six uh, kilometers in length. Um, and so they're obviously thousands you know of kilometers smaller uh, and that's really interesting because as we discover more and more moons and particularly of you know this small size uh, the the body the IAU who are actually responsible for naming these objects are kind of putting their hands up and saying they're probably not going to be named because of their small size. Uh, and obviously we'll just run out of um, names to use if we name every single tiny object in our solar system. Uh, so it's brought up a bit of an issue in terms of how we identify these moons, what they, um, you know, what they are identified as, whether we still call them moons. And it's very similar to the issues that we saw um, back, back a few years ago with, of course, the um, the denaming of Pluto as a planet um, and recategorizing that as a protoplanet. So in the future, we might actually see something similar happen with moons. So going back to Jupiter's uh, already existing moons, moons that we already knew about, uh, that are obviously bigger in size, 
what does the future hold for our knowledge of them and our exploration of them? Yeah, so Jupiter already has obviously a lot of moons, even before these these extra 12 moons. Uh, and Jupiter also has some of the most interesting moons. Uh, so they vary from, you know, being uh, moons entirely covered with uh, volcanoes and, and really regular volcanic activity. Uh, we have other moons that are just filled with frozen oceans um you know no landmass just completely uh dominated by these frozen oceans uh and this is really interesting these different types of environments uh on these moons could definitely harbor uh, you know alien life whether that is uh, microbial life um, or single cellular life or maybe it's even more complex the presence of water is a really good sign that there could be microbial life there at least and so across the next decade or so uh, there are at least three different uh, space explorations um, already uh, scheduled in to travel to some of these moons uh, really with the goal um, being to determine if there is extraterrestrial life um, present and evolving on Jupiter's moons. And so something I noticed uh, when reading your recent article in the Saturday paper about all of this is that future expeditions to Jupiter's moons are only going to take a bit over five years. And obviously this is with um, a light piece of spacecraft to go there. Um, but it does seem like there's an exciting future ahead for uh, for that kind of exploration uh, in the outer parts of our solar system. Is it... Is there the potential in the future for the kind of exploration that we see today on, on Mars happening around Jupiter and Jupiter's moons? Yeah, so as, you know, we obviously become more proficient with space travel um, and exploring our, you know, outer solar system, we are going to develop better techniques, better technologies in order for us to um, not only travel there more efficiently and more quickly, um, but just with the increase in expeditions, there will be more and more questions and data and science that we will want to do um, regarding these outer planets. Now, we obviously see that happen a lot on Mars already. Um, of course, that's going to be increasing. We are also seeing it happen with the inner planets. Um, so Venus, there are a few expeditions planned there as well with the very same reason, you know, to investigate if there is uh, microbial life or, you know, extraterrestrial life. Uh, as we, you know, take in more of this information about our environment, it's going to drastically change not only, uh, you know, our technologies, how we travel, how fast we travel, things like that, but also our view of potentially life if we uh, are able to discover anything on these planets or moons. That's that's really exciting. I mean, the idea that there's potentially uh, that life um, outside of Earth, even if it's microbial um, life or more complicated, like you said, um, I feel like the discovery of that would be um, culturally mind-boggling um, as well as scientifically. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know about culturally. I think we're all pretty used to the idea of aliens. No, I'm sure that once we know that it's there, it'll... Uh, I guess Twitter will blow up is is all I'm saying. Yeah, we might have to change uh, like how we draw our little green men. It might just be like little bugs or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe it'll become um, more realistic, but but maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want to keep it as uh, as little green men. I don't I don't know. You can read Carly Noon's full story in this week's edition of the Saturday Paper, which you can find in the link in the description. And of course, make sure to subscribe if you want more interviews, explainers, and news straight from the Saturday Paper.